This week, I'm talking about bowstrings. Now, I'm a bowstring builder, and I started building bowstrings because I wasn't happy with the quality of bowstrings that I was seeing out there being promoted as, you know, amazing. And what I learned is that it's very, very hard to make good bowstrings, especially by hand. But now I just have grown to love shooting my own bowstrings. It's just one more thing that I can look at on my bow when I'm in the field or on the range and know that I have a hand in making that part come together. And that's what I love about all of this stuff. So I'm gonna break down from a string builder's perspective, what should matter to you as the consumer when it comes to selecting bowstrings. Cheap versus expensive matters a lot, but where exactly does it matter? There's a lot of components to this and I'm gonna break it all down. But first, I wanna let you guys know, I've started a brand new podcast. It's called The Let Off Podcast. You can find it on Apple and Spotify. It's not under the Tooth of the Arrow brand name like this YouTube channel is, but the show's title sponsor is Tooth of the Arrow. It's going to follow a similar format to what I do here, just more in-depth, open conversations about these topics. I'm gonna to have a lot of guests on to share their experiences. I've got some really cool people lined up, bow hunters from around the globe. And a big part of it too, will be that I've got a Gmail account now open for you guys to send in questions. The email is theletoffpodcast at gmail.com. If you want to check out the show and write in a question, you can send an email to that email account at any time and I will read it on the next show and answer your question live. Enough about that, but please check it out. I'd really appreciate the support. So when it comes to cheap versus expensive bowstrings, there are so many directions you could go with this. The first thing is just going to be general build quality. I mean, when I'm building a bowstring, there are so many fine details that go into it. For example, when I'm laying up the string, for those of you who don't know, a bowstring is made in such a way where you have four posts and you wrap the string material around it a certain number of times. Usually you're gonna wrap it 10, 11, or 12 times so that when the pieces come together and are twisted, you have 20, 22, or 24 strands. You might've heard the term strand count. That's where it comes from. But the string itself is made of one continuous piece of bowstring material. That's why they're called endless loop bowstrings versus Flemish twist bowstrings, which is a completely different thing used in traditional archery. In compound archery, we use endless loop bowstrings and that's where the name comes from. This doesn't matter to you as the consumer, but to let you know where I'm coming from on this, when you have all these strands wrapped around the posts, you need to make sure that each strand has the same amount of tension. So when you're stretching the string, what often happens is the top where you're laying the new loops of material will be tighter than the bottom ones, which loosen off as you're doing this. So one thing I have to do as a string builder is make sure that all strands have the same amount of tension before I even twist the string. That's huge and something you're not likely going to see in lower quality bowstrings. The result of this, among many other fine details such as that, is peep twist. Peep twist is a bow hunter's nightmare. We all know that. And there's so many things in the bowstring building process that can cause peep twist. Some of them can be as easy as popping a center serving off and redoing it. But if it's not that, it's something that happened in the bowstring building process that can't be fixed. And that just comes down to builder experience and build quality. So that's the biggest thing you're gonna get. If you go with a big brand that ships out a ton of bowstrings every year, you're gonna get builders who are more experienced. Now, on that same note, if you want handmade bowstrings versus ones that are made primarily with a machine, there is a handmade component to all bowstrings, of course. But if you want that handmade product, you're probably gonna pay a premium for it just because it takes so much time. If you brought your bow to me and wanted a new let's say string and two cables, it is minimum four days of work for me because I have to let the strings stretch overnight, whereas the machines can pump them out really quickly. That's another thing you're gonna get with expensive versus lower end bowstrings. Are they stretched? Cheaper bowstrings are produced really quickly because like I say, I stretch each individual string for 24 hours at least before putting it together. So what comes down to a few hours of actual work stretches out over multiple days because I need to stretch the strings. And that's super important. If your strings are stretching when they're on your bow, you're gonna experience creep in your timing 
you're going to experience that your draw weight starts getting lower for no apparent reason as your cables get longer. That's also going to increase your axle to axle and it's going to increase your brace height. So if you're worried about the quality of your bow strings, one thing you can do right now is go on the internet and look up your bow make and model. Let's say, you know, PSE Mach 30 is what I just have right here. Look up the make and model specs. What you want to find is the axle to axle, which is a measurement from the middle of one axle to the middle of the other. And you want to find the brace height. The brace height is the measurement from, if this is your grip, from right in the deepest part of the grip to the center of the bowstring. Take those two measurements on your bow and compare them to what the spec sheet says they should be. If your axle to axle is longer than it should be, as well as your brace height, your cables have stretched. High-end expensive bowstrings just simply will not stretch because the builder has taken the time to completely get any stretch out of them before they build them. And when you buy string material, it's all called pre-stretched material and it is the product of the bowstring itself cannot be fully stretched until it's put together and both end loops are served. Another point where you're gonna see a big difference in quality between cheap and expensive bowstrings is in the serving quality. You can see it in your hands when you look at a cheap bowstring. Oftentimes, lower end bowstring builders will use a thicker serving material because it goes on much quicker. It's thicker, so there's less total serving loop that it takes to complete the length that is needed to be served. And the biggest thing you'll see is in the end loops. And loops are hard to make look nice in general as a bowstring builder and the dead giveaway of cheap bowstrings is just sloppy end loops and you don't have to be an expert to know what that looks like you'll look at it and say that doesn't look great you'll also see it in the serving on the cables cables have all sorts of weird twists and turns they take in the cam tracks and it's repeated hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times as you shoot the stress that is put on the serving of a cable is much more than the stress that is put on a string because a string goes up the cam and has a big loop and it just straightens out and comes back to this loop over and over. Cables have all these crazy twists and what happens as a result of that is you get serving separation in the cables. Now whether or not this impacts performance is to be determined. If the serving is separating as a result of string stretching absolutely that affects your performance but if it's just separating because it's taking a harsh turn it doesn't necessarily take away from performance but it doesn't look great and the reason this happens is two things your string builder didn't serve tight enough on the serving that's going around your cable tracks and they used a bad material there are only certain materials of serving that are rated for that type of wear tear and abuse on those cable tracks and it's the most expensive material there is of course it's the halo material is known as the best one for anyone out there who knows their servings and it is expensive so a cheaper string builder is going to use a cheaper 3d serving that's going to separate over time in the cables. I've seen it happen in as few as three or four shots with cheaper materials. I personally have played around with this and put cheaper materials on cables and put them on my own boat and I've taken three or four shots and I've seen that serving separation versus this new PSC I've got. I used a high quality, small diameter halo serving for the cables and I've shot this thing like crazy and they still look brand new but they cost me more. And to tie this all back to the beginning, the biggest thing you're gonna see out of poor quality bowstrings that is the dead giveaway is peep twist. If you have twist in your peep, there's an issue. Now, I want to clarify that if you're drawing your bow and the peep comes back straight and goes down without moving at all, it's just off to an angle, that's not a problem. That doesn't mean you have bad bow strings. That doesn't mean you have a bad string builder. All it means is that you need to get your string aligned by someone with a bow press. The problem comes when you draw your bow and you see your peep actually rotate as you draw. It's normal for that to happen on the first two, three, four shots out of a brand new string as the string settles into the cam tracks. But if it's happening beyond even a dozen shots, you have a problem. Now, I know a question I'm going to get asked is what about factory built strings? Factory built strings are stretched. They're made very quickly, but because of the scale of these companies, they have very, very good equipment. They make tons of strings and there won't be or shouldn't be peep rotation in your bow string straight out of the factory. 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with factory made strings, but the fact that they are making them so fast means they aren't stretched for as long as I personally would like them to. And you might not get the three, four, five year lifespan out of a set of strings that's made by hand or long stretched. With a factory string, you might get a year or two if you take really good care of them. They're probably going to stretch at some point, certainly sooner than a string that's been stretched for a day at 300 pounds. But if all you have is factory strings, you have good strings, rest assured. You have strings made by someone in the country who makes more bow strings than just about anybody. If we're talking about the big brands, PSC, Hoyt, Bowtech, Matthews, those string builders make a lot of strings. There's no doubt about that. You just might not get the longevity out of them because of the stretching factor. But that makes sense. They make so many bow strings, they simply don't have the time to stretch them all night. Hopefully that clears up some questions you might've had or didn't even know you had about bow strings. It's a topic I'm really passionate about. String building is something I spend a lot of time on and I find that not a lot of people know what goes into a good or bad string. Thank you guys so much for watching.